The chances of a no deal at the end of this year is high as 70% according to a credible source today. Boris Johnson set to hold firm uh, as the contentious negotiations with the European Union continue, really focused on two main areas of disagreement at the moment in the reports that we're seeing. And of course, I know that a lot of you are saying, look, let's walk away now. The EU's demands are ridiculous. But let's just go through where we stand now, because the signals are that Boris Johnson is saying and is, is giving the impression that he's serious about walking away at the end of the year. Of course, I understand the scepticism. After all, we had a previous prime minister who said all sorts of things which never happened. Theresa May liked to throw away dates and guarantees that turned out to be platinum hogwash. But a government spokesman, in fact, Boris Johnson spokesman yesterday, quoted as saying, the EU have refused to engage with our proposals, insisting that we must accept continuity with EU fisheries policy and disregarding the UK's status in, as an independent coastal state. A senior government source is also telling the Times that the government's approach, the refuse to give in to EU demands, is partly driven by the need to rebuild the economy after the coronavirus pandemic. Quote, what you have seen over the past few months is unprecedented state intervention to protect the economy, and that has certainly focused minds. We cannot be in a position where we are unable to do things that are in our national interest because the EU will not allow it. It goes to the heart of our whole position. Of course it does. Now, James Forsyth, who is very plugged in to the relevant people, he's got a very interesting piece in The Times. Johnson sees no deal as better than surrender. EU demands for a level playing field on state aid would stymie number 10's ambition to build tech giants to take on the world. Forsyth saying the chances of a Brexit deal have receded significantly over the summer and inside number 10, at the heart of government, they now think there is only a 30 to 40% chance that there will be an agreement with the EU, i.e. no deal now, the chance of no deal at the end of this year could be as high as 70%. We'll get on to fisheries in a bit, because we've, we've spoken a lot about fisheries, but Forsyth saying the sticking point isn't fish. He's told there's a deal to be done on that, but it's state aid, the question of how much freedom Britain should have to subsidise companies and industries. The Johnson government wants to use the power of the state to mould and develop what it sees as industries of the future. And before we get into this, I just want to, you know, regardless of whether you think that's right or wrong, the British government must have the power to respond as it sees fit, especially in the wake of this pandemic. It would be obscene to have a government constrained by EU rules moving forward. On that, surely, Democrats can all agree. There is a nervousness in government, Forsyth writes, that a new state aid regime could limit Britain's ability to deal with COVID and prepare for future pandemics. The bigger issue is Britain's desire to use state aid to build up its own technology sector. The view in Downing Street is that this country needs to develop large technology companies at scale that require state involvement. The concern is that unless the UK does that, it will end up as a technological vassal, reliant on other countries. The classic example, of course, being Huawei and 5G. Uh, we need to become more self-reliant. The view in Downing Street is that this ability to use state aid is so important that Britain can't back down on it. One of those closest to the Prime Minister, no names, is insistent that no deal was better than compromising the, the things that Brussels is insisting on. This is critical, guys. This, is, this gets the very heart of democracy and Brexit. Do you have a government unconstrained by the European Union or do you have a government that capitulates, that caves in and that signs up to be bossed around by the EU moving forward? Those around Johnson said to be optimistic that if the country can weather the first few deals, first few months of no deal for soft rights, then talks might resume in the second half of 2021 and they might be able to, from there, to negotiate the Canada-style free trade deal that remains their preferred option. That's something that's not been discussed much. If there is no deal, that then shows the EU, it's a show of strength, it shows the EU that the UK seriously will not sign up to political control, will only sign up for a free trade deal and demonstrated by the show of strength of walking away from the negotiating table. It would be a powerful move, would it not? 
Now, Boris Johnson is said to be absolutely adamant about this point on state aid. And apparently he's quoted as uh, apparently quipping that only three people in government agree with me on the whole question of how ambitious or purist to be on Brexit, but he's convinced of his position. Unless the EU moves further on state aid, he won't do the deal. And you can imagine it, can't you? Because it's been reported that Dominic Cummings is one of those who sees the huge value of having freedom on an area like state aid, having that flexibility, having that freedom, the, the ability to do what's in the national interest moving forward. But you can imagine, let's say some of the people that were slightly less committed to uh, Brexit, that didn't campaign for it and actually campaigned against it, they're probably of the mindset, and we heard this a lot under Theresa May, let's get it over the line. Let's just get the deal done. Well, get what deal done? Signing up to EU control. No, 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 no. Let's not get that over the line. That's a show of absolute weakness and cowardice. Now, that's the Times report on state aid, but there's also one on fisheries. And on fisheries... Boris Johnson has reportedly demanded the British fishermen double the size of their catch from Britain's coastal waters, leading to deadlock in the trade talks. The EU negotiators have said the British position would lead to loss of one in, one in three fishing boats in Europe and rejected the pro proposal out of hand. The UK wants the percentage of fish quota is reserved for UK vessels in British waters to increase from some 25% now, and isn't that an appalling number, to more than 50%. Barnier said apparently that this would lead to a 31% contraction in Europe's fishing fleet and devastate coastal communities. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Decimated fishing industry, devastated coastal communities. That's what's happened in the UK thanks to signing up to EU policy. Do they think we're daft? Do they think we're going to voluntarily sign up to that again? Absolutely no chance. Now, I have spoke to a few people today about what they make of that report of the... Uh, Go the fishing quotas reserved for UK vessels increasing from around 25 to 50%. Actually, people I speak to, Brexiteers, I won't name names, think that that's a generous proposal from the UK, if anything. So for the EU to reject that out of hand once again shows you their hardline position. They want to continue with a situation that decimates the livelihoods of the British fishing industry and severely restricts the number of jobs and any prospect of growth. And on things like state aid, I've talked about this at length before, they are terrified of the UK gaining competitive advantage. Well, sorry, but these are what the things that we voted Brexit for, to gain competitive advantage. And when I was briefly an MEP in the European Parliament, I would tell MEPs from across Europe, sorry guys, we're getting competitive advantage. That's the whole point of this, that's the whole point of this change so that we can do things in our national interest that we couldn't do as a member of this bloc. As I said, the reports are that Boris Johnson is willing to hold out on this area of state aid. He's not willing to sign up to the EU's demands. The chances of no deal could be between uh, up to 70%. The chances of a deal now rated as between 30 and 40%. As ever, I want to know from you guys, do you think... This is spin. Do you, do you believe it or not? Do you think Boris, when it really comes down to it, will walk away? Do you have faith in him or not? And what do you want to see the government do in these last few months as the end of the transition period fast approaches? Let me know in the comments. And as ever, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up. Please subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss the next report. Thanks for watching.